Okay, so in this video, I want to give you a very short introduction to a method of integration called trigonometric substitutions. And the name gives it away. It is a substitution where we are using a trigonometric function. So what's the idea? Well, sometimes you'll be facing square roots or other even roots, and you may want to get rid of them. And the idea is, if only you had, say, under a square root, a perfect square, then the square root would simply go away. And this can be achieved by the use of three special trigonometric identities. So the first one, of course, is 1 minus sine squared. And I'll use theta here equals cos squared of theta. Another one that you should know is 1 plus tangent squared of theta equals secant squared of theta. And here if you subtract 1 on both sides and write secant squared minus 1 first, you get that secant squared of theta minus 1 will equal tangent squared. And now you ask, why are these equalities interesting? Well, if you look on the left-hand side, we have either a difference or a sum of two terms. On the right-hand side, we have perfect squares. So if we had the square root, say, over terms of the form of the left-hand side, so over a sum or difference of terms, you can't cancel a square root over a sum or difference of terms. But if you take the square root of a perfect square, then the perfect square cancels the square root, and you have, hopefully, a much simpler integral. So, the idea is, in this case, you will let x, suppose that you begin with an integral with respect to x, then you would let x be sine of theta. And I won't write exactly equal, but I'll write approximately equal because of two things. Sometimes we'll need to add in a multiple of sine, and sometimes we'll need to also add a constant term. But when x is approximately sine of theta, then what's inside possibly a square root will be transformed into a perfect square, which will cancel the square root, which will give us undoubtedly a much simpler integral. Here, well, we would let x be tangent of theta. And again, I will write approximately, as once again, we could have a constant multiple of theta, of tangent of theta, sorry, and also adding a constant term. And here we'll let x be secant of theta, and again approximately as we can possibly have a constant multiple plus another constant. And of course, the idea is to think of here you have a constant minus something squared, in which case you want to use the sine function. If you have a constant plus something squared, you want to use a tangent function. And if you have something squared minus a constant, you want to use the secant function. And as always, when you make a trigonometric substitution or any type of substitution, you need to find the differential of x. So here, the differential, again, taking the differential on both sides. And I'll also write approximately, as there could be constants floating around. The differential of sine of theta, of course, is cos of theta d theta. The differential of tangent is secant squared of theta d theta. And the differential of secant, of course, is secant tangent d theta. And that's essentially it. And so you'll see. The idea is twofold. Use one of these identities to transform a sum or a difference of terms into a perfect square, which will cancel possible square roots. And then, by making the appropriate trigonometric substitution, and finding, of course, the corresponding differential, we'll go from an integral in terms of x to one in terms of theta, and what we'll have will be a trigonometric integral. And as we now know how to integrate any trigonometric functions, then this should be a fairly straightforward problem. Now this is not crystal clear, don't worry, and the next videos will consider several examples that will hopefully make this idea a lot more concrete.